UVB light is vital for all reptiles, and without it, every one of your snakes, lizards, and turtles will die a horrible death, unless it's overrated. Now, I wanna make something clear. When I say UVB is overrated, I don't mean that you shouldn't be giving UVB to animals that actually need them. Bearded dragons, Euromastix, things that clearly need these. But I think that using UVB for everything and using the blanket statement, everything needs UVB, is just a farce and a lie. Quickly to summarize, what is UVB if you're new to this? UVB is a type of light, it's a spectrum of light that us as humans cannot see but a lot of lizards can. And it is thought that all snakes, lizards, turtles, and tortoises, and so forth, need this light. And it is true that some of them do, because UVB is essential in helping these animals metabolize vitamin D. Vitamin D3 is essential for calcium absorption in the digestive tract. Without proper calcium absorption, these animals will start suffering from things like metabolic bone disease, which looks like this, and other terrible ailments that will, in fact, kill them. And by by them I mean some reptiles because it isn't all of them. And in recent years, we've definitely had this inclination to put UVB on everything. And I don't think, for the most part, as a rule, it's a bad thing to give UVB to animals that don't need it. But let's just get into that, starting off with number five. Sunbeam snakes, because this is in fact a top five list, but we'll go over UVB and why I think what I think as we go. Sunbeam snakes are a snake species from Indonesia, Thailand, places like that. I've actually found sunbeam snakes in Thailand, and when did I find them? At night. Where did I find them? Basically completely buried. Because sunbeam snakes, which are a three to four foot snake species, it's a colubrid, they are going to be found only at night, and if you find them during the day, it's because you dug them up. These animals don't like light at all. What's insane about this is they are one of, if not the most iridescent snake on the planet. The shine, the shimmer, the oil staining type thing that you're looking at here is insane. And the way iridescence works is it has tiny microscopic grooves in the scale that catch light, bounce it around kind of like a prism, and it shows up as this. These are really cool snakes but you'll never find them out during the day. They don't even cryptic bass, or at least I've never seen any report of them doing this. If you have, please let me know in the comment section below. But some snakes, there's information, or at least people reporting information, saying that the idea that all snakes don't need UVB is not accurate, and things do change, I agree. I made a video like this in 2019 and said blue tongue skinks don't need UVB, and I was wrong, I corrected myself, I know that they do, and the reason I know that is because science changes and a study was published since then proving that they do. And some of these snake species are things like hognose snakes, where people report, oh, their eggs have better calcification, which is a thing with hognose snakes, their eggs don't calcify all the way out sometimes, if they have UVB, and we'll get into that at the end, because because I've actually done a full year-long experiment with hognose snakes and UVB. Anyway, back to the point here, if a sorial snake that's only out at night, where there's zero science to indicate that they need any sort of UVB, will metabolize calcium just fine. The way that snakes metabolize calcium is very different than the way lizards metabolize calcium. Keep in mind, they split apart from each other millions of years ago. This isn't to say that maybe, possibly, UVB might be beneficial, but I always like it like this. It's really beneficial for you to get a whole bunch of tissue work and chiropractic and cold plunge and red light therapy and all, but if you don't get it, you're gonna be completely fine and you can still live well into your 80s and 90s and maybe 100 years old without all this extra stuff. And I think with UVB, it's the same thing with some species. Now there's some that are on the fence too, and I wanna get into that as well. So let's go to number four and start with lizards because the big hoopla now is that all lizards always need UVB with no exceptions. I think it's pure baloney. I think that there are animals like Chinese cave geckos coming at number four that are gonna be completely fine and not just fine, but will have no noticeable benefit from UVB. Now to prove this, I've started doing my own experiment with UVB with Chinese cave geckos. Well, I didn't start. I started about a year ago, and then I'm making a video about my findings. Moral of the story, I had my Chinese cave gecko under UVB for a full year after keeping Chinese geckos without UVB for two full years, and I moved it back to a place without UVB. Now, these animals are from places like China, and they don't go out 
during the day. There's really no cryptic basking that I've ever seen. Now, with that said, just because I haven't seen it doesn't mean that there's no Chinese cave gecko who's ever gone out during the day. I've just, I've never seen it while the UVB was present. On top of that, if you look at their natural habitat, these geckos do spend time in caves, but not just caves, but places where there's really no sun. Places that ha are heavily wooded, that have heavy cover from the sun, they're not out during the day, and even the places where they're hiding during the day aren't getting sun in the first place. I think there'd be a difference if they're hiding spot. Say they have a little hidey hole in a, you know, a rock wall or something like that, or a cave, and right outside of that wall while the sun is beating, okay, that, that'd be different. But where these guys are in the wild, there is no sun coming through. Now this doesn't mean that there's not very limited amounts of UVB coming through. That's always possible too. Either way, the point is these animals are small. They're about the size of a leopard gecko or African fat tail gecko. They're going to eat the exact same diet as an African fat tail or a leopard gecko. So if you want an animal that is a little bit different, which is the point of the video, if you haven't noticed some different animals that you might not have heard of or your friends don't have as long as you're supplementing them with calcium d3 in a vitamin a multivitamin which of course do your research on how to do that i think i did a cave gecko right here which could help you out the important thing to realize is they're different in their care with humidity and their temperature because these animals like it a lot cooler than a leopard gecko or african fat cell gecko and they like it more humid up to 90 percent humidity during parts of the evening and they can get up to about 50 as the lowest, but keep in mind, these animals will die if they don't have that proper humidity. They're gonna have a whole bunch of issues. So keep them cool and keep them humid. Plus, I mean, look at them. They have these strong feet, which allows them to hold on to things in ways that other similar geckos can't. Their eyes look insane. A Chinese cave gecko looks like an African fat tail gecko and a leopard gecko made a baby and then it joined a Panic at the Disco cover band. It looks like the emo version of all these eyelidded geckos. Just quickly before we move on to the next one this is not an ad at all i want to say thank you for watching the channel i appreciate you guys thanks for subscribing and i'm giving away a big prize pack to say thanks all you have to do if you'd like to be part of the giveaway is subscribe or follow instagram tiktok facebook and youtube the links are all below in the description and comment prize pack with a random three digit number that's how i'm picking is i'm just going to pick a three digit number out of a hat and everybody who picked that number will win this prize pack additionally if you want to win the second prize pack just join the Patreon. All of the Patreon members are entered in the draw as well. That makes better odds for you. If you wanna win hundreds of dollars with the merch, plus things from around the world, currency and sand and snake sheds and all this stuff I've collected, yeah, you can go ahead and enter. Really appreciate it, it's free for you. And if you wanna join the Patreon, it's much easier for you to win. The draw is on August 2nd, let's get back to the list. Number three, let's go back to snakes here since we've established that there is hoopla, which is what I'm gonna call it, over snakes needing UVB. And I don't think that Maclats pythons, there's really anyone who's gonna argue for this because first of all, they're a snake that is gonna be out during the night. But the reason I put it on the list is because these are animals from Indonesia, from the northern part of Australia, New Guinea, and these animals are going to be out in the trees because they are an arboreal species. So an arboreal species of snake you'd think would get more light, sort of, because these guys come from dense forests. And the reason that you have plants that don't really like light, Calathea, for example, is a really good example of this called the shadow plant, is because in parts of these forests or jungles, there's very little light getting through the canopy. These animals aren't on the outskirts. They're not, you know, foraging around. We're in places where it's, there's lots and lots of light coming through in savannas or plains. It is dense forests where they're going to be found, and it's not going to be in the canopies. It's gonna be a little bit off of the ground. Now keep in mind, this is a bigger animal, like seven or eight foot animal. So it isn't the best pet for a lot of people, but if you're looking for something bigger, I get that comment a lot for these lists, think about a Maclats python. Plus, they're a little bit cantankerous when they're first born, but they will calm down. I mean, look at the one that I have here, striking at the camera, versus this one here that is grown up, and Annalise, the all-Canadian reptile girl, has done a great job of calming down. Super chill, tame as can be, just like a ball python. Plus, like I said, they're arboreal, so they're gonna climb on you in ways that other snakes might not. A corn snake or a ball python is not going to climb on you and feel the same way that an arboreal snake does. And although there's other great options, you know, boa constrictors, for example, I think a Maclats python is just a little bit different, and because it's a arboreal python that's bigger than something like a spotted python it just has this uniqueness about it where there's not a lot
lot of other things in the category like this. And to round it out, the point of the video, they don't need UVB light. So if you want to give it to them, great. I, I don't think that there's a way that you could judge if they do a lot of basking or not, because they're going to be kind of out and exposed during the day, like a green tree python or an emerald tree boa. So if someday a scientific report comes out and they've tested UVB versus not UVB, and it has some sort of change when they do blood samples and they test the sheds and whatever else, I'll change my mind and make a whole new video. But until then, Maclet's pythons have done great in captivity for the entirety that we've kept them there without UVB light. And I really don't think that there's enough benefit from UVB lights to say that they need it. Number two, this is the part where I try to change your mind. Crested geckos, Lichianus geckos, basically everything that's Rachidactylus or used to be Rachidactylus, because I know crested geckos aren't. So even things like Chihuahua geckos, right? And the reason that I'm putting them on the list is because I've kind of changed my mind. Now, I do think you can keep crested geckos and everything in this category without UVB light and they'll do absolutely fantastic. However, I have done my own study, or not study, but research observation. I'm not a scientist. I'm not trying to pretend to be. And I do think that they have a little bit of benefit from UVB. I've been keeping Cresta Gecko since 2010, something like that. Like a long time, okay? And the pair that I have currently have had since 2015 or early 2016. So it's been a long time, almost 10 years, not quite. And I've kept them without UVB for most of that time. And most people I know keep them without UVB. You give them the Rapashi or, you know, Pangea, whatever, that has a supplementation in it. I supplement the crickets with calcium and it's always been fine. However, the egg production of the females has gone up since adding UVB. I do notice cryptic basking. I do notice that these animals like to be out for short times during the day where I didn't see that behavior before I added UVB. So although I have them on the list of animals that don't need UVB, and I think it'd be okay to keep them without it. I don't think that you're gonna have issues like you would with a bearded dragon or Fiji banded iguana or tortoise or turtle that absolutely needs it or will die a terrible death. However, I think there is enough scientific backing and observational backing, because again, I'm not a scientist, I haven't done a true scientific study, and I'm only one person, so this is an anecdote, and I'm just giving you my opinion. My opinion is, I think Cresta geckos would absolutely benefit from UVB. I am going to continue to give my animals UVB. I now give my Chihuahua geckos UVB and I wanna do more observation. I guess I should have mentioned this at the top. UVB comes in different strengths, 14, 12, 10%, 5%, 2% are the really normal ones. I give 2%, so a very low percentage UVB to those animals that are nocturnal or crepuscular, and I think it does benefit them. So use your own judgment in doing your own research. This is on you as the keeper. So they're on the list to make you think more than to give you permission to keep them without UVB. And number one, this will be the controversial one, corn snakes. Now here's why it's gonna be controversial. This is a diurnal snake. Now it's diurnal, so it's out during the day, which means it needs UVB. Well, causation, correlation, right? We have all heard this. I don't think just because they're out during the day means that they need UVB. I don't think that they're out during the day searching for UVB. I think it has a lot more to do with it. And I think that saying, you know, this equals this, that's the issue that we're getting into. And that's why the whole everything needs UVB kind of irks me because I think that it's being disingenuous. Do we need to give UVB lighting? to more animals than we do. Yes. Does everything need it? No. And I think with corn snakes, I've started my own observation with this as well. Keep in mind, we've been keeping corn snakes without UVB forever. And I agree, just because they're breeding and pooping and eating doesn't mean that they're always happy. Every human in solitary confinement is not happy and they all eat, defecate, and they would be breeding if you gave them the opportunity to, if they were in that same condition. So it doesn't mean that these snakes are always happy and benefit and whatever. However, I've kept corn snakes with lots and lots of room. I'm making a video actually right now about how I'm keeping one in an eight foot enclosure, which is like double the size of what is optimal. I don't keep him with UVB and he uses every inch of climbing area. He's always being inquisitive. I'm going to try the exact enclosure and switch out the grow bulbs with UVB bulbs and see if I notice a difference. And maybe if you hit like and subscribe and you see a notification in a year saying I was wrong, perhaps that's what it is. And I'm open to this. But as of right now, I don't think that there's anybody that can show scientifically or observationally that it is bad to keep corn snakes without it or that they benefit enough from UVB to say, yes, they do need it. 
Now, why we'd want one, it's a four, five, six foot snake if you get a big one. They're easy to be found. They're really cheap to buy if you don't wanna to spend tons of money on the snake, but wanna spend tons of money on the enclosure. I always like to do that. And they're just fun. And they're not gonna bite you likely. They're really unlikely to bite, just like the sunbeam snakes, by the way. And they're diurnal, so they're out during the day. So as always, thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys got to see this video early. You know about the experiments, experiments I'm doing. With these animals, for as little as a dollar a month, you get videos early, discounts on merch, all that and more. And if you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe. It's free, helps the channel. And because I do videos Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.